Okay, brioche lovers, this pattern is for you. The flying foxtail blanket. Are you ready? The flying foxtail blanket is absolutely beautiful, inspired by the flying foxtail shawl and wrap. I just couldn't get enough of that beautiful, exaggerated yarn over motif. And now you get all of those foxtail repeats in a huge, beautiful rectangular blanket. The flying foxtail blanket comes in three sizes. The one you see in the photo is the medium size, which is still quite big. The medium size is really good for a lap blanket for your living room. There's a smaller size that's great for a baby blanket, and the large size is for a huge bedspread, a dramatic, just statement blanket. So the length is customizable. You can just keep on repeating those brioche motifs as long as you want. For the medium size, I used six skeins of tandem for the main color. So six skeins of Westwool tandem will be that front main color, the foreground color, and the background color I mean, look how beautiful the wrong side is. It's so reversible, so beautiful. That wrong side color used five skeins for the medium size blanket. So it's a really nice long length, plenty of size to watch movies on the couch, big enough to share with you and a friend or a loved one. So big enough for two. The baby blanket size is still really generous, but all of the kits we have at Stephen and Penelope will be for the medium size. So you're going to find six skeins of DK weight, for the main color, five skeins for the contrast. Now, if you're putting your own palette together, which kind of color do you put for the main color? Which one is good for the contrast? It's a reversible blanket, so it doesn't really matter too much. You can use the reverse side and it looks just as beautiful. But for contrast palettes, I really like having a dark color on the front with a light color in the back, and that's gonna give you this really bold framing effect with the little light color pop coming from below. So I like the dark color on the outside if you're putting your own palette together. And it's just, I'm just obsessed with all those big yarn over increases that happen and the little decreases. If this is your first brioche project, I would maybe pause and do a hat first, okay? So if you're diving into a huge big brioche blanket, make sure you practice first. There's lots of resources here on YouTube, my brioche tutorials, and I have a whole brioche basics workshop. So if you're new to brioche and you're just inspired by this gorgeous epic blanket, you can learn how to do the brioche stitch and all the shaping techniques you need to knit this blanket with brioche basics. It's a workshop at westknits.com and you can watch all the chapters to learn all these skills. And once you're comfortable with the brioche, you're just gonna love all the squishy texture. So two colors are what you need in DK weight. Six skeins main color, five skeins contrast color. If you're doing a palette like this, hmm, I'd maybe do the neutral as the main color and then the bold color pop as the background color peeking from below. Yeah, these could work either way. If you're unsure which one you wanna use for the main color or contrast color, just get the equal amount of skeins or get an extra skein of your contrast color just so that you have the flexibility to have one be the main, one be the contrast. You use a little bit more of that main color because of those selvage stitches and the I-cord cast on and bind off. So something like this could work either way, but whenever you have a really bold color pop, I usually like putting that on the background because then you get that little color pop peeking from the depths, peeking from below. So the same thing happens with this kind of palette. When you have a neutral and a pop, I would use that French gray as your main color on the front, on the front of the blanket. And then the background color would be the color pop, this royal. This is French gray and royal. That would be a really dramatic color pop palette. And some other combos we have. We have a lot of these kits for you at Stephen and Penelope where you can just pick your favorite combo and then we'll send you the yarn to knit the blanket. This is Norway. I would use that as the main color. And then glass I would use as the contrast color background peeking from below. If you pick colors that are a little more similar, if you don't want that punchy high contrast effect with your stitches, and want something a little more subtle, then stick in the same color family and you could play with that shadow effect 
by getting two light colors. It's not as crazy a contrast as something like this. That would be really punchy and graphic, but this is a bit more sweet and subtle. I would use this as the main color, I think. Yeah, I would use this as the main color on the foreground and the little light color peeking from below on the background. I think that would be really sweet. So you mostly see this on the front of the blanket, that beautiful dusty rose. This is called Rose Vita, and this is our powder colorway. Two of our pinks. And if you want to go neutral, that's a really great choice for something so big, such a classy, beautiful design. Going neutral is just going to emphasize that classic heirloom quality to your project. This is Chestnut, a warm brown, and Dutch Sky. I, this, could, this could also go either way. This would be really cool peeking from below, but I think for me, if I was knitting it, I might go, oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe this as the main color. So you mostly see dark on the front. Yeah, that would give you this kind of effect, that framing quality. Chestnut and then Dutch Sky. So lots of really fun color combos to play with this blanket. I hope some of you even do a multicolor version. Like how amazing would it be with one color on the front? And what if you striped colors on the back? Or even did like a fade of colors on the back? Oh, like light to dark grays on the back. So don't worry if you don't have six skeins of the same color in your stash and you want to use your DK weight yarns, you can stripe it up and get creative. I did that years ago when I knitted my Brio Chevron blanket. I used lots of different hand dyed colors and I striped and faded my colors on the front of the blanket and did bold color block stripes on the back of my blanket. So you could do a multicolor version of this pattern. I think the two colors is really classy and makes a beautiful statement to highlight those motifs, but I'm, I can't wait to see how y'all translate this pattern. So you'll be able to download this now as an individual PDF on Ravelry and Westnets.com. So once you get that PDF and cast on, I just, even with a subtle combo like those pinks, I can't wait to see that shadow effect, but I'm hoping that some of you really take it to the next level and stash busted and collect all those different yarns faded and do a multicolor version. So I just can't wait to see uh, how y'all interpret this flying foxtail blanket. So thanks for watching. I hope you love brioche stitch as much as I do. Throughout the years, there's just so many techniques and color combos to play with this brioche ribbing. It just makes such a beautiful, rich textural fabric full of dimension. So catch the brioche bug and cast on a beautiful blanket.